Hello! Next up, how to cool pipes. Whether this is about uh, uh, gas pipes or this is about uh, uh, water pipes or, or any other liquid pipes pretty much. Uh, it is important to know how to uh, make, uh, ma you know, change the temperature of, uh, of the water or change the temperature of um, the oxygen for example. For the most part these are the, the two elements that we want to change the temperature for. And um, initially uh, you do find you have in your base uh, you have some pockets of water wi which have um, a very normal temperature around like 25 degrees Celsius which is uh, very good for your dupes and your uh, farms so you are fine but later on uh, you you have two issues first of all you want to generate uh, oxygen from water and also you want to use that same water or a, a similar type of a similar pocket of water uh, for your plants, for your you know, for your everyday stuff inside your colony. Now the thing is, if uh, the the water pockets that you find around that are not in the in the main main area of your base tend to be hotter for the most part, just because they are in like in the swamp biome, uh, for example. So you know, it's about like 35 degrees, or sometimes it could be 45 degrees. They tend to, it tends to be rather hot, and uh, for for the most part, plants require. Um, a temperature that's uh, around 25 to at most 30 uh, in order to grow and also your, your dupes do not feel very comfortable with, uh, with a lot of heat around them so how, what can you do? how are you supposed to uh, cool down the, you know, the water and um, the gases, the oxygen? Now, now there are a few different methods obviously there are quite a few that you can potentially use and um, you know there are some workarounds to multiple methods, but I would uh, always recommend a couple a couple of methods as being the easiest and simplest uh, to achieve. So let's just say that you found some water and it's in a hot biome. Um, I cannot really show it super well over here because it's I have dug out everything. But um, let's just say that you are in a hot biome and you have some water that you have um, found. Um, and um, you want to, to send that hot water, let's say it's like 45 degrees and uh, you're actually sending it over here to um, your electrolyzer. So uh, first of all, the, one of the easiest things that you can do is build your ox oxygen room, for example, in your ice biome so that it, uh, it gets the heat, of the, you know, it gets the coldness of the environment and so that pipes are generally becoming uh, colder and uh, the you know the produced uh, oxygen is actually colder but um, you will notice here that uh, this comes out as uh, uh, sorry actually sorry this is the the water that's incoming actually and um, it doesn't really matter what uh, what kind of temperature it 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 comes um, it comes in as because um, it will uh, eventually be created uh, it will eventually create oxygen and as you will see here. Uh, oxygen, uh, you know, oxygen that gets created is uh, in a, is in a fairly good temperature uh, in this uh, in this situation. But here, no, uh, it normally comes out at, at 40 degrees, I believe. And here, you would like to you know to change the temperature because 40 degrees is just not uh, not good enough. So this created a 40 temperature, 40 Celsius uh, temperature uh, uh, oxygen. You really don't want to send that through your base because everything will fry eventually. So what you want to do? Is you can uh, first of all you can uh, as you saw here or initially you can potentially take advantage of the environment and create some radiant gas pipes. Um, this uh, this kind of uh, pipe actually allows your uh, um, your the the contents of your pipes uh, to to get the temperature of the environment much much faster, and so this uses your the environment to actually cool down the the, in, the insides. Uh, the thing is, you can use that. You can use that temporal, temporarily, but you will notice that after a while, this actually affects the surrounding environment on its own. So it it actually heats down the area and eventually has no, um, you know, no output, no no result for your um, um, gases. So you have to be careful about that if you do that, because you will either need to add more radiant pipes so that you you continue taking advantage of the environment. And it's um, you know it's a little bit of a pain to have to manage all that, but it's it's a it's a useful situation when you don't have wizards, which I think it's uh, recommend as being the, the best way actually. Creating a, an abyssal light uh, container here that includes uh, four or five wizards. I think five five is generally the safest, but if you have uh, if you have it inside your 
ice biome, it, it will generally produce very very cold temperatures. And uh, let's examine that here. So you see that it gets in as uh, at 32 degrees Celsius over here. You see the insulated gas pipe content, so that, uh, the oxygen is at 32. And uh, over here it starts going to the radiant gas pipe. And now it's still not inside the, the room because it's in the abyssal light uh, tile, so the temperature st stays the same. But over here it starts going inside the um, the cold area of the of the wizards. And let's see how that affects the temperature. See that? Let's check that. That's insane, isn't it? Uh, take a look at the difference: 8.6, 5.9, 3.3, 8.3, 0.6 minus. <laughs> it's insane. So this uh, effectively comes out as 4.3 over here and what you need to do right after that once you immediately once you exit the uh, you know the room with your pipes then you need to use the insulated gas pipes and this makes sure that you uh, keep the temperature of uh, of the oxygen at bay it's actually gonna be the same it's not gonna change because the insulation in the pipes makes sure that uh, there's not a lot of heat transfer and uh, you you could potentially use a visa light but I don't really recommend it because pipes tend to be very lengthy very long um, and um, you you want to probably want to be using your abyssal light for other purposes. Uh, just using uh, igneous rocks uh, will just keep the temperature at okay levels. It will still grow a little bit higher, but it will it will still be good enough. So you see here minus two, uh, going here. Sorry, that's the one. Minus two again. Minus one. So it eventually comes out at um, what is it? Uh, this is empty here. Point, zero point zero. So it's at about uh, zero. Uh, which is uh, perfect, really. I mean, uh, if you if you take a look at the um, temperature here, it actually helps cool down the things here. So it's um, it's it's a perfect perfect type of uh, <laughs> heat here. You see, likewise here, that actually kind of helps keep my um, my base cool over here. And yeah, you, you could potentially use your abyssal light, and I recommend that you use your abyssal light when you want to isolate uh, much much hotter areas because. Uh, the abyssal light is actually ha has a zero thermal conductivity. So th if this is, if this uh, if the temperature here, here is like uh, hundred as, as it is here, you see, um, it's still gonna be like thirty here, like the normal temperature, which is uh, which is amazing. I mean, it's uh, it acts as a as a rubber really that actually doesn't allow heat to pass through at all. So it's like zero heat uh, <laughs> heat traversal, and that's awesome. So that's why I wouldn't recommend to use uh, your abyssal light with the pipes because there are better uses. That's what that's what I meant. So yeah, that's uh, that's what I use uh, for the most part, uh, which I I, I prefer because it's uh, super easy. The other mechanism, the other method that you can use is that normally in your base initially you have some pockets of water. Let's say that you have a, some clean water over here. Actually, it tends to be larger. So let's find a larger one, maybe. Um, yeah, maybe you have such, 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 a, such a pocket of water initially in your base, which tends to be at around 35 degrees, uh, sorry, uh, 25 degrees Celsius, so it's very, very, very comfortable. So you can do the same thing that, that I did with uh, Wizwords, uh, uh, but instead just pass the, the, the pipes through the water uh, in a similar, similar way. And um, it's it's uh, it's another mechanism that you can use, but I don't like it so much because I want to use the the water. <laughs> but uh, you can you can obviously do it temporarily if you cannot find uh, other mechanisms. So it's it's actually good to to know it at least. And the other uh, more advanced method, uh, which is also not so difficult to achieve, is if you find a anti-entropy thermonullifier. This thing produces a lot of heat, a lot of uh, coldness, I should say. And uh, you just pump some hydrogen that you normally create with your ventilation room, and um, you can use it to, you know, especially with some temp temp shift plates that are behind it, and just continue. These things transfer transfer the temperature. So if it's uh, like minus 30 here, it can transfer quickly over here. And um, this is another mechanism that you can use maybe for a pool of water, but I don't like it that much because first of all, this has to be wolframite if you want the best uh, the best way to do it. Uh, actually, the best way to transfer heat, uh, wolframite is the best. But if you don't have uh, probably English or rock is uh, still okay. Uh, you, but um, you know, I, I kind of like to you know to use this mostly with uh, uh, you know my polymer press, which uh, overheats much much more, and I like to keep it in a very in a much contained temperature. That doesn't mean that you cannot do both. I mean, you can always do like both, uh, um, you know, cool cool down, cool both things. So the um, the nullifier is actually a great mechanism, but the problem with it is, is that you normally don't find it very very quickly. Uh, plus, you have to provide it with hydrogen, so you kind of need to have created your oxygen room already. 
Um, it's, it's a nice, a nice thing to know, though. Uh, that, that also helps. So that's it. I think these are the easiest mechanisms, and uh, I would really recommend them. Uh, again, if if you can't get the wish words, I think that's the best method because it's uh, you know you do it once and it works forever, pretty much. Um, and so you know, I it's uh, I think that's um, you know by, by far the uh, you see the temperatures temperatures here are pretty awesome. So that's uh, that's I think the you know by far the easiest uh, the easiest way to go about it that will keep you for for a long time. I think I'm in cycle 570 here. And um, I have been, uh, I have done that at cycle 50 or something. So you see that it works perfectly. So that's it. Thanks for watching. And uh, that was another video. Obviously, for oxygen, not included. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll see you soon with uh, more tips uh, for the game. And let me know if they help and what you would like to see. And uh, I'll see you soon in the next one. Bye.